Football IQ is your basic understanding of the game. There's a ton of aspects that can be wrapped up into Football IQ, and I think that could be a whole video in itself. But summed up, I think that it's your understanding of where to be positionally without the ball, both when attacking and with defending. And it's your understanding of what to do with the ball or your decision making. I also think that Football IQ is one of the toughest things to develop as a player. I think it takes the longest to develop. I think that most players, especially as they start to develop and they start to climb the ladder upwards to higher and higher levels and maybe even to the professional level, they start to realize that what really separates a lot of the pros isn't just necessarily the technical skills or the fitness or the physique or the strength, but mainly it's that football IQ. It's the ability of these top pros to consistently game after game, day after day, training after training to make the right decisions and to be in the right spot every single time or majority of the time. So the obvious question now is, well, how can I develop my football IQ? And honestly, the best way is to get on the highest level team you possibly can get on with the most knowledgeable and helpful coaching staff that you can find. Every single day in training, learning from your teammates and your coaching staff, every game that you play and every film review session that you do to review your touches and games, I think is the best way to develop that IQ. But there is something that you can do right now at home by yourself that's gonna help out so much. And that's pausing and predicting players' actions on full matches on YouTube. All you have to do is head to YouTube, go into the search bar and just type in full match. You can type in your favorite team, you can type in whoever. I guarantee there's gonna be dozens of search results about your team playing full matches on YouTube for free. Click on any match that sticks out to you. I'll choose the France-Argentina 2018 World Cup game. And all you have to do is just find a player in your position with a formation that your team typically does and analyze that player. I'll just choose Benjamin Favard for France because he's playing that right back role in a 4-2-3-1. And then all you do is you just watch the game and as soon as the player that you've chosen is about to touch the ball, you just pause the game and you try to predict his actions. The goal here is to have the same exact thought process as that pro. You want to be on the same page with every single prediction that you make. And if you are, fantastic. But if you aren't, then you ask yourself, why did he choose that? Why did he make that decision? Why did he position himself that way? And try to learn from his actions. I'll give you a first hand example of this right now. Okay, so I'll just sit down, watch the game. Here's the kickoff. I'm going to fast forward through all the moments that uh, you know, Pavard isn't going to be on the ball or defending or anything. So. We'll just go from here. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the game right here. Pavard's taking his first touch at this moment. It's off of a goal kick, and there's a ton of congestion, I think, seeing up the field. So if I'm here, I'm thinking either trying to play back to my center back here, if he's gonna drop and give me an angle, or I'm gonna play it all the way back to my goalkeeper, and let's establish a little bit of possession here. So we'll play it and see what he ends up doing. Is exactly that, plays it back to the goalkeeper, team opens up, and now he can push up the field. So, so basically right there, that's just like a check, perfect. I, uh, I analyzed that play on the same level. Once again, pausing it, Pavard's about to take his second action of the game. I'm looking in, I'm seeing Pogba right here in the center of the field, pointing back. He wants him to play back to his center back. I'm also seeing Mbappe, he's coming down, but it looks like he might be, might be going down the field, and then his winger right here is starting to round the run. So I might take a touch, I might try to open up my hips a little bit and look forward, but most likely I'm gonna play it right back to my center back here. But let's see what he does. Opens up the hips and plays into Mbappe. That's a great play. So perfect, I mean, so I had the, the, the thought of opening up the hips um, and he found a great pass up to his winger. So I think that's, that's even better. So right there I'm noting, okay, Pavard's a little bit more aggressive looking forward in that moment, which is really good to see. So once again, We'll let this play. Okay, a little counter attack here. The ball is past the midfield line now, attacking. I think it'd be wrong for Pavard to step out here and to apply pressure on the ball because it's better to delay in this situation, at least in my opinion. I think you should delay, track back, just try to keep in a line with your defenders. And then once you get about a couple yards above the 18 yard box, that's when I think one person has to step depending on where the ball is and where the runners are. So I think Pavard should just drop in this instance and just delay as much as possible. So dropping, 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 and he steps, he steps a little bit higher. So I think that's a pretty good area to step, but I said just a couple yards past the 18. He probably did about 10, 10 yards past the 18. And he is stepping, so he's trying to block off that pass out to that winger out wide. So stepped a little bit higher and earlier. And I don't know if that was a call from the center back or what, 
but yeah, just a little bit higher, a little bit higher of a step than what I, I would have thought. And then as that ball's beating me now, then you have to recover, get ball side, and then at this moment, since it is more of a counterattack, I really think stand it up and just allow your team to get back. You don't need to win a tackle here against Di Maria. He's got the ball, it's under control, he's facing you. I think just delay, 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 and try to keep this ball going backwards if you can. Cuts inside and goes backwards, perfect. So. Another great play. The only, the only thing that was different than what I thought was that he just stepped, that whole back line stepped about five yards earlier than I thought. Once again, pausing, he receives the ball again. He has time, he's kind of broken that line. I would probably try to either play it right away into Mbappe, right at his feet, or I would drive a little bit inside trying to cut off these two, these two runners. So we'll see. Right into Mbappe, perfect. Um, at this point, I don't think Giroud is on to play. Uh, Mbappe is kind of running in front of me and going, kind of going to the side. I could try to play his feet right now and do an underlapping run. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do this really quick to see because I really don't know. That's what I'm thinking right now. I'm thinking try to play into Mbappe and then do an underlapping run, but if it's not on, if it gets cut down, closed down too quickly, I might cut the ball back and try to play into a central midfielder so we can you know, reorganize this, this counterattack. Plays into Mbappe, underlapping run, perfect. Okay, so it didn't come out, but again, the idea, perfect. Exactly what I thought. Play into Mbappe, underlapping run right there. Okay, Argentina has just scored. Looks like they're sitting back a little bit now, probably to end this half. Uh, Pavard is about to take his touch here. He's got tons of time. At this moment, I think that you just play this right back to Pogba and then you get higher up the field and maybe do like a little overlapping run around Mbappe. We'll see. So I'm gonna pause it again. He's taking his touch inside, looking forward now. I, I don't really think it's on. I don't think it's on to look forward into Giroud or to Griezmann. Um, Switching the point of attack to the other side of the field now, I don't think is on. Argentina is in such a good positioning here, such good lines, and they're, they're set. I think just play it right back to Pogba and let your central midfielder work his magic, you know? And does that. Takes a couple touches, plays back into Pogba, realizes it's not on, and then gets back. So anyway, guys, this process is something that every single one of you guys can do right now at this very instant. You're watching me on YouTube, so obviously you have an internet connection, you have a device to watch some games on YouTube. Go to the search bar, type in full match, type in your favorite team, find a player that you wanna analyze and do this. I think if you guys make a goal to analyze one game a week like this, you're gonna see massive improvements to your game over the long term. And the most amazing thing is when you're at training or in your game and you find yourself in a similar situation that you analyze, like you see the same type of movement that Pavard made in that France versus Argentina game and you go, okay, in this situation, he passed to Mbappe and made that underlapping run. So then when you're in that same exact situation in your own games or your own trainings, you know, okay, I can play out to my winger and try to make that same underlapping run. It's so great when you start recognizing those moments in your own game and it will completely improve your football IQ. So anyway guys, I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right guys, peace.